Hello and welcome to our video summarizing all you need to know about the Great Depression in Germany. My name is Barbara and in this video we'll examine the consequences of the 1929 Great Depression which had originated from the US but of course it spread in terms of its repercussions to Europe and further abroad and of course one of the countries that was massively impacted by this is Germany and we can argue that the Great Depression is really what tipped the balance for Germany and led to the rise of Hitler. So let's get started. Now Let's begin with the timeline in terms of the most important elements that led to the Great Depression, but also how this impacted Germany. So, as I mentioned before, in the US, there was a great period, particularly after the First World War, so during the interwar years, of great economic success. And by 1927 to 1928, USA experienced a gold rush, particularly on Wall Street. This is where a lot of huge companies are listed on the New York Stock Exchange. As a result of this gold rush and as a result of these good times, there were many American people who bought lots of shares in Wall Street and in these companies that were doing really, really well. However, there was a massive turn of events in August 1929. Now, in August 1929, as a result of these boom years, the Young Plan was signed by the USA and Germany, which replaced the Dawes Plan. In other words, the USA, which had essentially bankrolled Germany's economic recovery and its development during its golden years, and this is 1924 to 1929, essentially guaranteed that they would continue bankrolling Germany and also help Germany towards its reparation payments, but also the Young Plan had capped the reparation payments for Germany to a rate that was seen as affordable. That being said, this was happening as things in America from an economic perspective were shifting for the worse. Now, the first major event was October the 3rd, 1929. Gustav Stresemann died. Now, if you recall from our previous videos and do check out our other videos, which talk about the golden years of Germany, as well as the Weimar Republic on our channel, Gustav Stresemann played an integral role in turning Germany's economic and political position around. He united the left and right wing parties in Germany and not only did he negotiate a lot of these debts and a lot of these payments that came from America to help Germany recover, but he also was a really important uniting force for politics in Germany. Now when he did pass away, Without him, the coalition government of Weimar Republic started to do really, really badly. On America's side, October 24th, 1929, the same year, was really a defining moment because this is when Black Thursday happened. Effectively, share prices on the New York Stock Exchange dropped. In other words, share prices mean the cost of owning a piece of a company. Therefore, if this cost drops, that therefore means that company is reducing in value. And what this happened, or rather what this resulted in, is people who started panic selling. So do you remember, for example, in 1927 to 28, there were lots of Americans who engaged in this gold rush and bought lots of shares. Now, these same Americans started panicking in 1929 and they started selling, causing companies to lose value even faster. And this consequently led in the period between October to December 1929, lots of US companies losing value and ultimately going out of business. These companies employed lots of people and therefore as a result when they went out of business, there was mass unemployment in the USA. There were hundreds of banks that closed and many people lost their savings. And in fact, there were a lot of people who also committed suicide as a result of this. Now, this had a reverberating impact not only on America, but on Germany, because as we've mentioned, Germany was essentially bankrolled in terms of its recovery by America. Now, in March 1930, the Weimar coalition government collapsed. Of course, also remember that politically, the main unifying factor, Gustav Stresemann, had died. And this, of course, had an impact. Now, the centre party's Heinrich Brüning was then appointed as chancellor of a minority government. In other words, he led a government that his political party had a minority in terms of seats. In July 1930, President Hindenburg then dissolved the Reichstag and ruled by decree. In other words, he ruled as a dictator because he suspended Article 48 and he suspended the constitution under this article, meaning that he could rule by decree. This is because 
that there was a lot of chaos on the political side, but of course Germany started seeing the impact, the economic impact of America's Wall Street collapsing. In September 1930, in the Reichstag, there were elections, which resulted in more support for the Nazis and KPD. Do remember that the Nazis are extreme right and the KPD are extreme left. In other words, lots of Germans started voting more for extreme parties rather than centre parties, which are less, which are far more liberal. In May 1931, unemployment in Germany reached 4 million people and Austria's largest bank called Credenstalt collapsed, leading to a huge crisis in Germany. In June 1931, there was what we call the Hoover Moratorium. Named after US President Hoover, he essentially cancelled much of the cash that was promised to Germany under the Young Plan for one year, and this was terrible. Of course, this is because America was going through an economic disaster, hence they could no longer afford to give loans. Worse still, a lot of American banks started wanting to recall a lot of this money, and America wanted some of the money that it had loaned Germany to be paid back, which of course starts creating a vicious economic cycle for Germany as well as America. In July 1931, a banking crisis erupted when Danat Bank, which is one of the largest banks in Germany, fell to open and people panicked and essentially withdrew all their cash. In April 1932, President von Hindenburg, re-elected as German president, defeated Adolf Hitler by a small margin. Bear in mind that before this happened and during the golden years, Adolf Hitler was seen as a marginal figure and the Nazi party was seen as a marginal figure. However, now he was increasing in terms of his support amongst Germans. In May 1932, unable to govern effectively without support in the Reichstag, Chancellor Heinrich Brüning resigned and Brüning's 26 months in office made him essentially the longest serving of all Weimar chancellors, showing how weak the Weimar government became. In June 1932, Hindenburg, the president, then appointed Franz von Papen as chancellor. And in July 1932, the Lausanne Conference in Switzerland voted for Germany to stop paying reparation payments due to the Great Depression. In July 1932, the Nazis, the NSDAP party, won 230 of the 608 seats in the Reichstag elections and the communist KPD also increased its seats from 54 in 1928 to 77 seats in 1930, meaning of course more extremist parties started having much more of a say in government. In December 1932, Franz von Papen was unable as Chancellor to hold together the coalition government and thus he resigned and Kurt von Schleicher became Chancellor. In January 1933, Kurt von Schleicher resigned as Chancellor and Hindenburg was then pressured to appoint Hitler, who was now extremely popular, as his successor and as Chancellor. And of course, bear in mind that later on in that same month, Adolf Hitler then became sworn as German Chancellor and effectively the period of democratic freedoms in Weimar Germany came to an end during this year. Now, of course, it's really important to understand the different consequences and impacts of this Great Depression. And the first consequence, of course, is the economic impact. So the Great Depression had a huge economic effect. And even if this depression started in America, Germany was really reliant on the USA for its economic recovery. And thus, this depression showed just how the foundation of the Weimar government was built on shaky ground, which is essentially American loans. Also, although Germany during its golden years, which is 1929 to 19, 1924 to 1929, although it had grown rapidly during this time, it really wasn't ready for the sudden stop in loans. Essentially, its growth was highly fueled and highly dependent on loans. Banks in Germany really struggled to provide money and credit to businesses. In 1930, the USA, which was a huge buyer of German exports, essentially stopped buying goods to protect American companies. And lots of German people panicked. And in 1931, many removed the cash from banks, meaning big German and Austrian banks went out of business virtually overnight. Also, lots of German businessmen lost access to US markets as a result, and they found credit, which is essentially money given in advance by a bank, impossible to obtain because these are the very same banks that went out of business. Also, many industrial companies and factories closed or shrank dramatically. And by 1929, around 1.5 million Germans were unemployed. And by 1932, German industrial production dropped to 40% of its pre-1929 levels. 
by early 1933, unemployment in Germany was 8.5 million unemployed people and shopkeepers and small retailers lost customers. Of course, these are the customers who had consequently become unemployed. Therefore, their income fell to 50%. And this, of course, was a huge catastrophe. A lot of people suffered. And also do bear in mind that it wasn't only working class workers that suffered. White collar workers, in other words, people who were lawyers, doctors, uh, surgeons, essentially professional people, In that class, and this is the middle classes, 800,000 people were unemployed. Also, of course, there were huge political consequences of the Great Depression. So the Wall Street crash and the depression essentially destroyed Germany's short-lived democratic period under the Weimar government. Do remember, in times of great economic problems, economic crises, people always look to extreme parties for help. This is because they need a scapegoat to escape their misery. And this is exactly what happened in Germany, meaning many people turned to extreme political parties, which did really well as a result. Germany, as I mentioned before, experienced political polarization. In other words, people started to vote for extreme parties in contrast to the moderate liberal parties that were really popular during Weimar's golden years. The Nazis, above all, really exploited the anger that many Germans felt at becoming poor and they put themselves forward as a solution. And of course, Hitler himself really exploited this to his advantage and hence why he essentially eventually became chancellor. This led them to do really well, especially among the working classes who faced a lot of poverty and high unemployment. As I mentioned before, from a political perspective, it was a huge disaster that Gustav Stresemann died in October 1929, just when his country was most in need of his strong leadership and political acumen. He also had brought the right and left-wing parties together. However, without him, this is what caused the polarisation. Now, there was a grand coalition of different parties which tried to hold together the Weimar Republic. So it was the DVP, CCP, DDP and SPD, who tried to govern between 1928 and 1930, led by Hermann Müller of the SPD. However, Hermann Müller proposed a policy of austerity, in other words, cutting back by the government, which essentially failed to get an agreement from the SPD, whose working class supporters would be hit really hard by cuts to welfare. This led him to resign and the coalition collapsed by 1930. In the 1930 elections, the Nazis had a huge breakthrough, gaining 107 seats, which was up from just 12 seats two years ago in 1928. And this made them the second largest party in the Reichstag. The KPD, which is a communist party, also increased its seats from 54 seats in 1928 to 77 in 1930 and Hindenburg decided to use Article 48 to appoint a series of chancellors and he ruled by presidential decrees. In other words, he became a dictator during the crisis and this made essentially Germany a presidential dictatorship. Also remember, another huge outcome and rather a huge disaster was the death of Hindenburg, which occurred a little bit later. Also, prior to his death, he was quite old he was 83 years old and he was really frail and this led the people that surrounded him which is essentially a small group of ex-military officers they influenced most of his decisions and many of these officers including major general kurt von schleicher oscar von hindenburg and otto meissner really saw extreme left parties as a threat and hence they felt that if extreme parties were doing well they wanted to support the extreme right as that this would be more in line with protecting their interests although do bear in mind they didn't really like the nazis this small group that surrounded hindenburg they did want to use hitler as a pawn to weaken the left And this, of course, meant that not only was Hitler strengthened, and of course, they also underestimated Hitler's acumen. They thought that he could be manipulated to weaken the left, and then when they were done with him, they could cast him to the side. However, Hitler outmaneuvered them. Do you remember that by 1930, democracy was dead, and Germany became essentially a dictatorship, and by 1933, Hitler became chancellor, ushering in Nazi Germany. Of course, there were great and important social outcomes as a result of the Great Depression. So remember, after the First World War, which was in 1914 to 1918, there was a widespread movement in Germany for social change to improve the lives of the poorest in society. And as a result, the SPD introduced social programs like unemployment insurance, the eight-hour working day, collective bargaining rights, as well as voting right reforms. For instance, voting, lowering the voting ages, increasing voting to uh, women as well as men, 
and helping people move out of poverty and housing. However, the Great Depression and the onset in 1929 proved a huge social disaster for these people who had experienced so many gains between the interwar years. So many of the achievements of the Weimar Republic in reducing class difference between the very rich and the very poor were essentially undone by this economic crisis. And of course, the people that suffered the most were the working classes and the middle classes. People's salaries were cut and many others were laid off and unemployed. The government also reduced its funding of social programmes. So do remember, for instance, Hermann Müller, who proposed the policy of austerity cuts. All of these funding programmes impacted the working classes, so therefore being cut made the working classes even poorer. There were lots of cuts to important social benefits like unemployment insurance, and this of course was a huge disaster for people who lost their work. And the social cohesion that had been building in Germany really began to disintegrate. And during the Weimar's golden years, the class divisions between the upper classes, middle classes and working classes had been reduced given the better standards of working the working class enjoyed. However, the Great Depression reversed all of this. Remember, many middle class people became poor overnight and the working classes suffered the most as they lost their jobs, property and social benefits. As a result, workers began to listen to more radical ideas on how to solve the economic crisis. Therefore, the left wing KPD did really well and the growing influence of the communist KPD party caused many people in the middle classes and upper classes to turn to the extreme right. And of course, this is what caused Hitler to do so well. Industrialists also became far more willing to fund right-wing politicians like Hitler in order to protect their interests. Hitler also used this skillfully because he blamed the Great Depression on Weimar officials as well as important groups such as the Jews who he labelled as really wealthy and behind the economic problems of many working class people. So that's all with regards to the Great Depression and its consequences on Germany. If you found this video useful, we would really appreciate it if you gave it a thumbs up and a like. But also, do make sure you visit our website, www.firstratetutors.com. There we have lots of essay model questions, practice questions that you can use to improve your knowledge, not only on this area, but other areas of history. And also make sure you visit our website because we offer lots of support material, which you can use as part of both your history as well as English and your academic studies. Thank you so much for listening.